crisis in Fukushima continues. Over the weekend, the crippled Japanese nuclear plant spewed even more highly radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean, roughly 45,000 liters in all. According to a French nuclear research institute, since the Fukushima nuclear crisis began in March, that plant has leaked more radioactive material into the ocean than has ever happened before in the history of the planet. Not only that, the architect of Reactor 3 at Fukushima spoke out recently criticizing TEPCO, saying the company's explanations don't make sense. And he claims that more than eight months since an earthquake and tsunami triggered this crisis, it's inevitable that nuclear fuel has leaked into the groundwater, meaning the China syndrome is officially upon us, or could be. He also warned that if underground water gets overheated, it could trigger a hydrovolcanic explosion. So what's that, and what does this all mean? For an update on Fukushima, I'm joined by Paul Gunter. Paul, welcome back Thanks from BeyondNuclear.org. Absolutely. And uh, pleased to have you with us. Um, based on what the former architect of Reactor 3 said, have we officially reached the China Syndrome stage or the edge of it at Fukushima? Right. Well, these are clear warnings that the accident is still ongoing now, uh, nearly nine months into this, uh, since the earthquake and the tsunami. But, uh, you know, I think that uh, the, um, the former president of Saga University, he's all, his, this information is also corroborated by an earlier report in September where an assistant professor at the uh, Kyoto University Research Reactor Institute said that units one and three had already had a melt through and that by his projection, the corium had moved uh, as much as um, uh, 10, 12 meters into the ground already. This is so, the corium is the, the corium basically is kind like, of white hot right, melted it's like, it's core. It's like magma. It's like volcanic lava, but it's yeah. it's highly radioactive fuel and steel, and it's just it's burning down. And <clears throat> even uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company, um, in its computer simulation, because let's be clear, nobody can get into these reactors to actually see what's going on. These are all simulations, it's projections. Absolutely, it's it's killer. Uh, right there, but um, the, uh, the the TEPCO has admitted that by their latest simulation, the corium has burned through two thirds of the floor of the of the reactor. So it's melted. It's the reactor um, one. They say has um, 85 to 100 percent of the core uh, melted away. Uh, burned through the bottom of the reactor vessel, fell to the uh, concrete floor, and now is burned through over two feet of concrete, according to TEPCO. Right. Now, <clears throat> and they've they've always been a little conservative, shall we say? Let's <laughs> say that it, it, I think it's I think it's honest to say that TEPCO's uh, credibility is less than zero right now. Yeah. So so uh, you know we had a, a core meltdown in Chernobyl. And it, it, correct me if I'm wrong on that. And there was a massive molten white hot corium, you know, this melted core material that could have sunk into the earth. How did they stop that at Chernobyl? And how might they be able to replicate that? Or might they not be able to replicate that in Fukushima? Well, the. Um to prevent the, yeah, the explosion. Right. You know, it, at Chernobyl, the what they table. did is they dropped tremendous amounts of lead and graphite and sand. And uh, the, the situation in Fukushima is, is uh, different because you can't airdrop all that uh, radioactive, uh, you know, that cover right. uh, because uh, these fuel pools above the core are still filled with huge amounts of radioactivity and, right. and, and, and reactor used fuel, uh, right. spent fuels, it's right. called. So they can't really bomb this uh, corium as they did at uh, Chernobyl um, b from the air. Uh, so, and it's uh, largely inaccessible right now, both in terms of mitigation and in terms of being able to actually assess what, what, what the level of the accident is. Nobody really knows right now for units one, two, three, and four. Amazing, amazing. How do they, you know, in, 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 so, you know, and I, they were actually, they, didn't they dig a tunnel underneath Chernobyl as well? And, they and, did. And, and yep. kind of basically a, a stop point for it, filled with right. liquid and nitrogen or something. They can't do that, I'm assuming, at Fukushima because the water table has to be so close. What happens when that corium hits the water table? Well, um, this is a big concern because, you know, I think that if, um, if we think of this as like a volcano, 
uh, only with magma you're, or lava, you're, you're thinking about radioactive material, radio, hot, red hot radioactive material melting down. Uh, once it hits this groundwater source, the concern is, is that there will be this large steam generation and then simultaneously, if it's hot enough, it'll uh, make hydrogen gas, oxygen becomes a very explosive and pressurized so it goes environment off like a volcano basically. and it just blows right out that's that's what uh, yes. the uh, uh, pres former president of the Sega University is calling and that could this, happen uh, anytime to, to anyone you know of these we're three uh, we're we're keeping our fingers crossed the uh, but I think right now it's all pins and needles there's nothing we to don't stop we it. don't really know and uh, the, the 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 real issue is the just unmeasurable uncertainty yeah. because nobody can get in there and see what's going on. So I bought a Geiger counter. <laughs> it's sitting here ticking while we're talking. Um, is there a point at time in the United States, I, you know, and in Japan for that matter, where having something like this and going to the supermarket before you buy food is a good idea? I think that these are uh, instruments that are going to be commonplace, uh, particularly in Japan. I, you know, I, we're encouraging city councils, uh, you know, to be uh, to actually uh, develop a sister city kind of project, so that you can send Geiger counters uh, from your community to communities in Japan. That you know, right now, what we know is is that Fukushima Daiichi has contaminated every prefecture in Japan with but, cesium-137. But their seafood is going to be hitting our west coast right. any day now, and it could be in the restaurant down the street. It, it certainly re represents a concern now for the indefinite future that uh, we have this bioaccumulation, biomagnification of radioactivity, strontium-90, cesium-137, um, that will happen. You know, there are some 80 farms in Japan that have been taken out of rice production yeah. because um, it's the, so the, rice, the rice is excessively radioactive. That's amazing. Paul, thanks so much. Again, for no by. nukes. Yeah, no nukes, absolutely. And uh, much appreciated your, your, the work that you're doing. Let's hope the world learns some lessons and doesn't ignore one of the worst ecological disasters ever. Time to ditch nuclear power, the most expensive and the most dangerous form of energy on Earth.